Uh, hello everyone, it's Pete here. I'm here with my Armour Mojave 4S. This is a really nice truck. I'm going to be doing a review in due course. But there's a few little issues with this that need ironing out. And one of those is excessively short run times and the ESC cutting out before you'd expect it to. So for example, just running this around on grass with a 5,200 mAh battery, it'd only get about eight minutes. And also if you're running something where it's under greater strain, like on the sand and through the mud and that, it was even less than that and it was cutting out. So the other way I could tell it was cutting off too early is that I ran this battery in the car down to low voltage cut off and then charged it back up to full and the battery would only take 3,300 odd mAh rather than the 5,200. So you could see it was cutting off way before the capacity of this battery. So it didn't seem right, and I suspected that the low voltage cutoff for the LiPos was a bit too high, but I didn't have any way of proving that until I got this widget here, which is the ESC programming box for this. So a big thanks to Chris at Chris with a C R C who did confirm that on this model you can actually change the low voltage cutoff using this device. So thanks Chris, I'll put a link into his video as well because he goes through it in a bit more detail than I will. So it's worth pointing out you can't change the low voltage cutoff on the previous model, it was the version 2, this is the version 2.5 or 2B or whatever they call it. So it's the ones with the centre diff which are the versions 2.5 that have got the ESC that you can set the low voltage cutoff. Having said that the previous model didn't seem to have this problem out of the box so it wasn't really an issue. Useful little side feature of this is you can take it out of the field with you and use it as a battery tester. If you put your balance lead in there, that's pretty handy. You can also use this out in the field to program your ESC. So you've got your different functions there. You can change the particular setting here. What I'm going to show you in more detail is how to attach it to your PC and get this all set up. Right, so there's a little app that goes with this, so you need to get yourself to this page here, Google something like Spectrum Smart ESC Programmer V2. You should find yourself on this page. And if you go Manuals and Support, so I'm going to use this one, Spectrum Firma Smart Link Update Instructions. So it opens this page, you click on this link here, and you get a download. And I've done this already, so I don't need to do this, but uh, you need to basically go to your downloads, unzip this file, and you should get the app, which looks a bit like this. Right, so I'm gonna plug the box into a spare USB on the PC. And that says, if you can read that, it says connecting PC. So uh, that's that. So to check for a firmware update on the program box itself, choose that one. So you can see the current version I've got is PB-1.0.23 and the available versions are just that because I've already upgraded this. So the box itself is up to date so now we need to program the ESC. So I've changed the device to ESC up here. Okay, so I've got the car set up with the battery ready. What you need to do is get this little ESC fan wire out. Remember which way the wires are. The black is this side. Then you need to put the wire from the program box the same way. So the black is there. So that's in. So to make this work, you need to power the car up. Just gonna unplug the motor fan for a bit so you can hear what I'm saying. Right, that's better. Right, so if I have a look at the screen now. Okay, so device is speed controller, and you've got your different settings here. So while we're here, it's worth seeing if there's a firmware upgrade for the ESC itself. So you can see here the hardware version and the firmware version. The available firmware is the same as what I've got because I've already done this bit. Now my Outcast is the version 2 with the slipper clutch and my Mojave is the version 2.5 with the centre diff. If you just look at the ESC, it's very difficult to tell which version you got, but using this software you can see that the versions are different. So if you've got the version 2, you won't be able to do all of these settings that you can on this one. So I've already tinkered with this, so you can see the low voltage cutoff I've got set there at 3.2. I think it was set at 3.5 or 3.6, but I think it was 3.5. And the batteries were actually cutting off around about 3.6, so way too high. So my understanding is, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that the batteries, when they're under strain, they sort of dip way down and uh, then they recover a little bit. So the batteries end up about 3.4 per cell, which is perfectly safe. So the other settings I've got here, it's up to personal preference. I've got punch four, braking 75%, uh, reverse 75%. So you can change all of these 
as you see fit in advanced. With this one you can change the BEC voltage which is good so you can have a 7.4 to your servo rather than 6 which I have done. So batteries LiPo which is always going to be with these sort of trucks. Depends if you were going to use that ESC and something else you might want NIM but it's unlikely. Uh, these ones need to stay the same. I don't think I'd like to play with the motor timing really. So once you've made your changes you need to send settings to ESC. So that says OK. So that is good to go. So if I now switch the ESC off, you'll see this screen will change. Okay, so it goes back to that. So back to the car, I need to take this wire out, put the fan wire back in. So this one, like I say, you don't need to do that one. I just did that so it was quieter. And that is that. So thanks again to Chris with the C who did all this first, so I knew what I was doing. So now with the low voltage cutoff set to 3.2 per cell, I ran this battery down to low voltage cutoff and then charged it back up to full again and actually got 5,240 mAh into it. So the full capacity of the battery plus a tiny bit. So that is perfect. So I can confirm the run times are more like about 12 to 14 minutes rather than eight on this 5,200 mAh battery. So that is better, still quite a short run time. I think if you're getting this car, I'd recommend something 6,500 mAh and above so you can get a decent run time out of it. But this is what I happen to have. And we'll be getting some bigger batteries soon. So that is problem solved for that one. If this was helpful anyway, then please press like and maybe leave a comment and all that. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.